Futures Fast Forward. I'm your host, Samuel Anthony Otero. Today on Futures, we're going to take a look at welding and metal fabrication. You know, you really can't help but think of the welding and metal fab industry as the industry that really built America. But it's also an industry that has come an enormous way since the early part of the 20th century and the Industrial Revolution that built this country. There are many technologies that are available now that weren't even available 20 or 30 years ago. So the metal fabrication and welding industry of today is not what you think it might be. One of the things I really found interesting about taping this episode was the reaction of the kids that came out with me. As Corey Alessi, my co-host today, is going to tell you, it is definitely not the industry that he thought that it was. To be honest with you, I really didn't know that this... The IT computers and that went into the application as much as it does. Very lear good a learning experience today, actually. What's up, dude? You ready to do the show? Yep, I got my script already. I'm ready to. Dude, what's with the flank? <laughs> This episode of Futures Fast Forward is brought to you by our friends at Miller Welding and Machine Company. Founded in 1963, Miller Welding and Machine Company of Brookville, Pennsylvania is a single source solution encompassing fabrication, machining, and finishing technologies aimed to meet the wide range of needs that our customers demand. Staffed with a team of engineers and highly skilled employees, our quality and our commitment make us a leader in this industry. We provide our customers with high quality parts by continually improving the processes we use. And we provide our employees a safe and satisfying work environment and invest in their futures by constantly investing in new technologies. Two readily accessible state-of-the-art facilities accommodate our workforce of over 300 highly skilled employees. For current news and employment opportunities, visit our website at www.millerwelding.com. I've been doing this for darn near as close to, as I've been on this planet. No offense there, Bob, but uh, 33 years here, uh, you've, seen, you've seen a lot of changes in this industry. Yes. Tell us what it means in a nutshell to be involved in machining and metal fab today. Uh, it's an area of a lot of opportunities, a never changing. When we started 35 years ago, I mean, it was pretty pretty crude compared to today's standards. Sure. It's a never-ending change. Every day is a learning experience. Uh, it's been a very interesting career, and it stays that way. I mean, if, if you ever stop learning, you're just not trying. There you go. And what is available for somebody looking to get into this industry? Let's talk about some of the technologies. Oh, it's endless. These machines are computer-operated. Uh, there is just repairs of the machines themselves. Yeah. There is all types of support systems, building fixtures, programming, tooling. Uh, there's just an endless variety of things and that's what's constantly changing because you're always striving to do things better, faster, and supply your customer with a product that is a better quality and at a better price. And so there's a never-ending opportunity there to uh, just expand on what they have. Tool companies are always coming out with new tools. That's what's changed in the years that I've been here. There's opportunities here now that really didn't even exist 30 years ago. So, that, you know, for guys coming along to say you're gonna do this, it's, it's a never-ending change because we didn't even have CNC machines when I started, so this job didn't even exist. Right. But 30 years later, here we are and we need them. We're in the midst of, what'd you say, 100,000 square foot facility. One of them, the other one's just as large, 
tell us a little bit about the types of materials and, and machines that we're looking at here. This, uh, wow. This area back here, we're looking at uh, some turning machines and some horizontal uh, ma machining centers. Well, see, you're going to have a lot of shards. Dude, that is cool. Imagine you getting one of them stuck in your eye. That's why you have to wear these. Oh. Uh, most of the work that we do here is smaller work. Uh, a lot of it is uh, castings, uh, machining shafts, and so forth. So some of it is uh, for parts that we'll be putting together on other pieces uh, later later in the process. This is a bearing this housing? This is a bearing housing. Uh, this particular area here has been machined. Uh, the bore has been machined. Holes have been drilled. and. Uh, the next operation will be to bore this side and do this. So this is the type of machine here that, that this part will come off. There's that giant machine back here you're just showing us. That's just pretty much a larger version of a CNC mill. Yeah, these are that's what these are, CNC mills. And uh, as we go down through the shop, uh, you'll see that that giant machine that you were talking about is actually one of the smallest machines we have. So this is something Shane you were saying that. They they teach yeah. this at the school. I was trying, I run a little CNC mill, but right. it's not to that extent. Yeah. Cool. Maybe we need to get one that big, huh? Yeah, well. <laughs> this is not a traditional field for women to get into, but I walk in here and here we are. Yeah. Tell us what interested you into getting into metal, fab, and welding. Um, I was a tool and die setter before I did this, and then it just interested me. I watched the guys run lathes and stuff where I used to work at, and I decided to quit my job and go back to school and to a tech school, and that's what I wanted to do. That's. I didn't like the tool and die setting and more a lot of heavy lifting. And I just looked really interesting. And I already knew a little bit about what was, you know, measuring, reading instruments and stuff. And I went back to a tech school because I really wanted to learn how to do it. And it helped me a lot. And hands on helped me a lot in here, though, too. And you asked a question about what this is? Yeah. I asked if they were part of like a hydraulic lift system for something. What they are is they're components for a piece of construction equipment. We make components, just components alone. We've got a part in here that's a big arm that's being machined. Uh, we've got a weldment, what we call weldment back here, being uh, machined on a horizontal boring mill. What he's doing there is he's just cleaning some of the uh, chips off the piece while the, the part is getting ready to reposition. The uh, machine is going to change its own holes. So it's going to use a robotic arm at the top there to change the poles. And you can see the robotic arm coming in place. Sam, like what kind of programming language do you use? We use, uh, we use graphic uh, programming techniques using things like SolidWorks, uh, Mastercam, various other programs to program our machine poles. Here with Ryan. Ryan's telling us that, you know, this isn't as simplistic as you might think. This is not welding of 30 or 40 years ago where it was pretty much strictly a, a manual labor type endeavor. There's a lot of math and science involved in today's welding and metal fab. Now, Ryan, you're actually involved in training, correct? correct. For, for Miller Welding. Correct. Tell us a little bit about some of the challenges that are out there before people looking at getting into this as a career. Um, well, math is very important. Um, we do a lot of math. Um, science, science is also important. Um, cutting the different metals. You have to know what you're cutting, what you need to cut it with. We're boring out these bushings in line on either side of this part. Um, they have to be concentric with each other the whole way through. So you can't just throw it up on there and have it work. You might be wondering why Sam's floating around in a jetpack. Well, there was a really bad incident with some hot coffee. Well, it seems he's lost the use of his legs. He decided to go high tech, and there you go. And while Corey and the guys think they can build him some legs because they're all into this welding thing, we'll see how that goes.
Jefferson County, Pennsylvania is open for business with excellent tax-free building sites, a talented and experienced workforce, and business services specialized for your development needs. Jefferson County Department of Economic Development is ready to help you and your company grow and prosper. Join other prosperous companies such as Miller Welding and Brookville Equipment that have made Jefferson County their home. For more information, contact the Jefferson County Department of Development. Futures Fast Forward is sponsored in part by United Electric Cooperative. United Electric is special because it's owned by its members and is guided by a set of principles that reflect the best interest of those members. United Electric Cooperative members reside within 10 counties in PA and the cooperative operates an electrical system that spans 7,000 square miles while employing 72 local people. United Electric Cooperative, owned by those we serve. Visit our website for updated job opportunities. As I said at the beginning of the show, this was really a new experience for us because all of us that do this show, when we thought of welding and metal fabrication, well, you know, you picture a guy in a, in a smock and a helmet and goggles working in, in a dirty environment, and lots of noise and lots of heat. And Well, we found out that today's metal fab and welding shops are really quite a different story. They employ the latest technologies and information technology systems, computers, and even high-tech robotics. This is like a lot different than what I thought it would be. So hopefully these guys will have enough brains to be able to employ some of these technologies to maybe, you know, build me some new high-tech stills. company, a family-run business, really reinvesting back into their community and into the region and into their employees by providing the most high-tech equipment. And, and, and another thing, too, it's so wide, but the various fields you can get into. Like you don't necessarily just have to do welding. As you're pointing out right here, there's a lot that utilizes computers and technology. I think that's probably a, a, a misconception that a lot of people have as far as what manufacturing is all about today. Almost everything we do is computer controlled or has some level of technology involved. Today we're moving into robotics. Uh, we have uh, robotic welders uh, working within the, the organization. Uh, we've got lasers, cutting material, we've got high-tech paint lines. Uh, we've got a lot of technology. I'm just trying to take it all in right now. I'll figure it out once I get it all in my brain. It takes smart people to to manage it all and to operate it all. Now we have people in-house that are qualified to run these and we get new people in. We have them do a mentor program and train them to uh, run these in-house. We do the training. Once again, you're just saving time and money. Yes, that's if you don't have to be sending guys out. And then this way, you're sure they're learning what you want them to learn. So somebody interested in getting into this as a career field, their foundation that they're going to need would be what would you recommend? A uh, good math background, a good uh, good background in uh, computers. Right. You know, somebody that can uh, navigate around computers and be able to use computer technology. A good communication background. Hmm. You know, everything we do here revolves around people being able to understand what it is and pass information from one person to the other and, and see that things get done the way they need to be done. Now, I find interesting that in your laundry list there of prerequisites, you didn't mention basic welding classes or metalworking classes. I find that interesting. Basic welding and basic metalworking class are uh, certainly important, and it's something that uh, that I would say, all other things being equal, I would have uh, I would give precedence um, to those that have that background. However, we look for the proper aptitude and attitude. Okay? And aptitude and attitude are the two things that 
are probably most important for somebody to be successful here. Anywhere, really. See, I keep trying to tell you that. One of these days you're going to listen to me. Maybe you'll listen to him. It looks like a space shuttle pod, you know? I mean, it's a pretty complicated control panel. It's all computerized. Not what I was thinking when I was thinking of a metal fab shot. Can you show us a little bit and explain to us a little bit about what goes into this technology? Right. These machines here have uh, turning capability and they have drilling and milling capability as well. So the machine can uh, actually turn the part and then drill the holes for, say, a bolt circle where you're going to bolt something up to uh, a mating component or whatever. Uh, the uh, controls are, are uh, computer locations, uh, positions of the, of the tool, and so forth. It kind of looks like a robotic arm, but it's not. He seems to be using this to maybe plot out some points on the metal. Is that what's happening? That's correct. What we used to do uh, with the old technology and quality control is hand, measure, and inspect all the parts that needed uh, inspection for the GD&T, geometric tolerance dimensions. The ferro that you're seeing in operation now has cut our labor hours in a fraction of time. This is all computer numerically controlled. It's all generated on a laptop here. The point of that ferro arm is measuring all of the measurements of that part, of all the GD&T of that part, and it's giving us a printout on the laptop. It's very high tech, very computer oriented, and I'll tell you, it's really advanced and really saved manufacturing time and man hours and so forth, but it's the latest and greatest in the inspection process. Well, we're with Brad Miller, one of the many Miller family members who are keeping this business rolling. Brad, talk to us a little bit about the broad spectrum of opportunity at a, for, for career advancement at a company like this. Well, what we do here is we do a lot of tack welding, a lot of finish welding, a lot of mechanical assembly operations, like assembling pins and cylinders together. We do painting, uh, we do blasting, we do uh, machining operations, and that's just at this plant, not at our other plant. Well, this fella is welding a turntable for a, um, a man lift, for a boom lift machine. And we can rotate the part into the proper position so it allows us to weld safer and faster. How big of a part of your business is manual welding like this? Because there's so still, much in automated. It is still very large manual welding. Um, it's still probably 90% of our welding is manual welding. Now, our robotic welding or automated welding is going to keep increasing, but it will never replace manual welding. And this twin robot, of course, is welding uh, two, two heads are welding at the same time. Uh, this machine will index these parts around and do the second side of them, too. Right now, it's two robot arms are welding on one side, the part will rotate, and then it'll weld on the other side. And when these parts come out, they will be 100% done. But it will never replace manual welding. It's going to supplement it and increase it, but it'll never replace it. Futures Fast Forward is brought to you in part by Dubois Business College, providing quality post-secondary education for over a century. Their commitment is to develop programs that enable their graduates to be successful in their field of study. And they work closely with businesses and set programs that correctly mirror current industry trends and the modern use of technology. With three campuses in central Pennsylvania, Dubois Business College can help you touch your future faster. Visit them on the web at dbcollege.com. Produced at the IT Academy at the Jefferson County Du Bois Area Votex School in Reynoldsville, Pennsylvania, Futures is a prime example of the educational innovation happening at Pennsylvania's many career and technology high schools. Futures is bringing the real-world experience into the classroom like never before. And you, too, can take advantage of the career and technology educational opportunities that are right in your backyard. So contact your local career and technology high school and find out all about the many exciting and innovative programs that they have to offer. Programs that offer real-world training for real-world jobs. And if you're a professional working at a career and tech ed school, Futures would like to work with you to help you build public awareness for your regional educational efforts. So join the many businesses and agencies that are already partnering with us to take advantage of our advanced production capabilities, innovative outreach campaigns, and of course our ever-growing network of distribution channels. Put Futures to work for you. Contact us today to discuss a world of possibilities. Talk to me a little bit about 
skills that are necessary to get into a good fishing supplement. Well, uh, a welding course or a welding training would be great. We do do some in-house training of people to get them able to uh, do the welds we need. We do welder certification. They do have to pass certification. These parts are lifting people uh, 60 feet, 80 feet, 120 feet in the air. The welds are very important. I mean, people's lives depend on it. So the welds have to be good. And uh, we do inspect our welds. In fact, that's another position we have. We have welding inspectors. Oh, yeah. They do that. And every weld is inspected. Uh, most welds are being documented by uh, a welder will put his stamp on the part that he does so it's traceable who does what part. Uh, there's different sizes of welds, there's different materials we weld with. Uh, welding knowledge is, is, would be very good. And of course, the career and technical school, great place to get that. Very good, right. All these beds are like so big and like kind of brings me to wonder like you see like all these big stuff like cruise ships and stuff like that. And, and I, I was under the impression that it was made up of a bunch of like really, really small parts, you know? But you see stuff like this and you're thinking, you know, maybe Yeah, not. these are large components right. that are getting put together. What are, you, what are you guys working on here? And how has the technology changed over the years? You've been here, Jerry, what? 26 20, plus. 26 plus 26 years. Plus, yeah. So you've seen some enormous changes to the industry. Oh, yeah. Tell yeah. us a little bit about well, it. It's really evolved into um, a high volume, high production type of work around here. We used to be a job shop. We did a lot more uh, just one-on-one -on -one stuff, uh, uh, like a strip job would come in with some broken equipment. We'd repair a boom or whatever it took to repair it. Tell us about some of the technologies. I mean, what are we looking at here? Well, this is our newest machine. It's the latest and greatest, a lot of speed to it. Faster tool changing, faster rapids, a lot of travel. Uh, we, we bought it with a 44,000 pound rotary, uh, power rotary. It's uh, not state of the art control. Uh, it's more of an upgrade of what some of these other machines run as far as control wise. Uh, where we gain is with the speed we can machine, uh, a lot more high speed now. Uh, tooling is 50 times better than what it used to be. Uh, it's just, we get these parts out a lot faster than we ever could have in the past. Uh, we have a 15 ton crane. We can do anything very large in this in this bay. Now, what is it that we're looking at here? This is a this is a big hunk of metal. Uh, it's a, it's going to be a base plate for a uh, for a turret. Uh, for, for a what? For a turret. Uh, You've seen scissor lifts, you've seen boom lifts. Yeah. Everybody uses them now. Nobody uses scaffolding anymore. Okay. Uh, the industry's gone to these safer lifts. This is going to be the base plate for one of those lifts. Uh, there will be a machine area that will set down onto a bearing ring where it will rotate. Everything builds up from here off of the uh, machine. Oh, that's How much do you think one of these things weigh? Oh, we picked those up with a one-ton crane. These aren't all that heavy, although they look fairly large. A lot of burnout area to it. This young fellow is calling up a program. We have oh probably ten different types of plates we run here. Uh, we're tooled up for the mall. We got stop set up. We can make a quick change. He can call up a program, make a couple edits if it need be. All oh, then recycle the parts. He watches his tooling. Uh, keeps the inserts sharp. He's good to go. He can just keep uh, putting material out. Okay. Now I. And this is almost a family business for you. You're not a miller, no. but you've been here no. a long time. No. Your dad was here. Right. I understand you have other family members right. working my brother, here. My brother works here, and my boy just started part-time here. Wow. Well, tell me, give some advice to a young person that's looking into getting into metal fab and welding as a career field today. I would recommend it to anybody that doesn't mind working with their hands. Uh, is fascinated with how equipment works, uh, mechanics especially, I would recommend uh, this field. Uh, I enjoy it. And getting started, what would you recommend to somebody as far as getting started? Education, hands-on experience, hands -on a little experience, of Hands-on experience, definitely. Uh, education through a technical school, definitely. Uh, I'm not a college grad myself. I, my oldest brother has. I chose not to go to college. Uh, an engineering education, sure, would help. You know, uh, 
not necessary, I don't think, for the type of work we do. What do you think? Is this what you would have uh, thought of when you think of a welding and machine company? No. No, not at all. Okay, so you're looking for a job in the metal fab or welding industry. Well, you know, who would have thought that you could end up in a really nice, clean office with a really cool, high-tech workstation working in IT? Well, you know, it really goes to make common sense that a business such as Miller Welding, a big business doing business around the United States and indeed globally, is going to have a strong information infrastructure. And it's guys like Eric Miller who are keeping it going. Eric, tell us a little bit about what you do and the importance of IT to a business like this. What I do is to make sure that we have the systems in place that we need to allow our customer service reps, pretty much everybody from shop floor on up, to know where everyone's at, communication, so that we are communicating effectively, effectively rather, throughout the organization and making sure that everything's getting done efficiently. You look at a welding machine shop, you wouldn't necessarily think, hey, they do uh, a lot of wireless technology and things of that nature. A lot of places don't. We do, and then a lot of places are going that route. So I think that's going to only grow in the industry. And I think our needs, with the amount of data that we're churning, uh, a lot of times we have anywhere from, at this time, five to 7,000 jobs moving through the shop at one time. Wow. So how do you control all that data, process all those things, you have to have a reliable network and you have to have a good staff keeping that up and you know those sorts of things are going to demand IT needs. Those needs weren't there even 10 years ago we didn't do these things that we do now. So I think that that is starting to change in our industry and I think it's going to only foster more growth for the IT needs. So not just for the machines down on the floor that need to be talking to one another but for your office staff or your customers talking with customer service, customer service talking with customers, the whole the whole, the whole yeah, gamut. For instance, if, um, we have a certain production schedule and a customer calls up and they need something improved. I can't possibly get to all my supervisors, all my customer service reps, all of the people on the floor quick enough. So what I do is I key that information into our system, run a reschedule, and down on the floor, the guy, the gentleman who's either at this facility or maybe the other facility, it's either wirelessly driven or through the network, instantly it pops up, hey, now this is your next job. You know, real time, so everybody's on the same page. Oh, who would have thought? That's the beauty of this show. We get out around Pennsylvania, show you angles on career options that maybe you didn't even know existed. I know I didn't. Eric, thank you so much for your time. You're Appreciate it. Very thank interesting you. stuff. Thanks so much. Okay, thanks for watching this episode of Futures Fast Forward, part one of welding and metal fabrication. Well, I think that the guys actually did a pretty good job in building me my new legs. I mean, they, I, at least I think they're, they're a little bit wobbly. I, I, I don't. I, hey, good. Justin, I'm, I'm unstable. I'm feeling unstable. Is that correct? Because when you think of welding, you think of, you know, the old the welding gear covered in grease and the mask and just a you know, very dirty, rough, hard-working environment, you know? Dirty and rough. That, that's to be honest with you, I really didn't know that this, that IT computers and that went into the application as much as it does. Very good at learning experience. Great! Some new legs, and you'll be stronger and faster. Welding, oh, anybody can do welding. It's so easy. Great job. Somebody get me some legs.